All right, what's going on? So today we're gonna to talk about pickup adjustment, pickup height adjustment. Um, how do we choose where the pickup goes? How much does it affect the sound? And then later on, we're gonna talk about this kind of age old myth. Does the magnetic pull pieces from your pickups pull on your strings, changing the tone of your guitar? We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But first of all, uh, let's talk about adjusting our pickups. So. Um, because an electric guitar, a pickup in an electric guitar does not, is not a microphone closer versus further away. doesn't work the same way that that would work. Like with a microphone, we're dealing with sound pressure. And as we get further and further away, if I get close, 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 close versus further away, the more sound pressure literally pushing on the microphone um, the louder it gets and as you probably heard just now it started to clip because it over over saturated that since we're dealing with a magnetic transducer in a guitar it's it's different uh, what we want to do is every pickup has the flux the magnetic flux that comes out from the pickup has a certain working range and we need to be within that range so that when the string vibrates it cr can work within that magnetic flux and create um, a voltage we can get closer and it'll change the sound or we can get further away and it'll change the sound because we're actually going to change how much um, current we're inducing with it basically and so what we're going to do is i'm going to actually play some and we're going to move the pickup and we're going to listen to the tone changes and then we're going to talk about how how i adjust pickups although a lot of this is really mm, subjective but let's for those of you that have never done it maybe or are afraid to do it don't worry about messing anything up but you can really really affect the tone of your pickup so right now um all the string tests that we did for the last couple weeks and all that uh, have been with this neck pickup in this Les Paul basically flush with the the ring. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to play uh, three chords and then we're going to, and I'm, I chose three chords that will hopefully give us some high end and some low end kind of together in some good mid range. And then we're going to move the pickup up a little bit. We'll maybe do it like three times, like a really low, um, kind of a middle and a really high. And you'll be able to hear the tonal difference. And it's not just louder, the fre frequency response also changes as well. This has been kind of cool. All right, let's move that pickup up some. I moved it just a little bit and you see how much fuller that sounds let's go up a little more this is probably going to be too close yeah this is too close but we'll do it anyway overdriving now i'm uh hitting too much output into my recorder. Hitting the pickup. All right, that's too close. So let's talk about how we actually adjust this stuff. Basically what I, what I do as a baseline is I come and I fret the last fret on the string. It's hitting the pickup. So fret the last fret down here and I adjust this thing down to where it clears with a little bit of space in there and then when you unfret it it ends up being about three or four millimeters something like that
sounds pretty nice. Now, if we were to actually move this back down where it was before we started. Way weaker. Frequent, frequency response isn't as wide. Uh, it's just not doing as much. So, let's put that back up to the proper height where we had it. Now what I like to do is adjust my bridge pickup to just kind of have a nice balanced volume between them. Now, don't mistake volume for the difference in fre frequency response that we have here. The neck pickup, because the strings move more up and down, um, is going to inherently have more volume, but it's also going to have a lot more low, low end. Being closer to the bridge, our bridge pickup is actually going to have way more mid-range, which is a much more vocal quality. So even though it might not be as loud, it will still sound as loud. That doesn't sound like it makes sense, but it does because it's a different part of the frequency response. So if we go too close with this thing, it can end up being super harsh. People think that the bridge pickup needs to be this high output thing and be like louder than the neck pickup just because. I believe it should be balanced, so. Okay, so I've got it basically balanced between the two, uh, and then that gives me a really nice middle position. Okay, so this is all, obviously, you can adjust this however you want. Just know that the closer you get, um, you're gonna get a fuller frequency response, but it's gonna only do that to a point. Then you're gonna get too close, and it's just gonna be loud and unbalanced. So, like I said, what I do is I fret the last fret, I adjust the neck pickup to, I don't want it to hit, and I want a little gap in there with the last fret fretted, so that when I let go of the string, eh, it's about three millimeters or so. Three or four millimeters, 150 thousandths of an inch for non-metric folks and then um, basically I just adjust the bridge to be balanced however I like it um, then if it's a strat with a middle pickup then what I do is I put the position the pickup selector in one of the notch positions usually in the neck and middle because to me that's what a strat is supposed to sound like and then I um, just adjust the middle pick pickup by ear basically so can you be too close absolutely we're going to talk about that in a minute can you be too far yeah for sure it will not sound as good but what we're getting at here is um you just kind of want to be in that sweet spot so when you look at uh the magnetic field of a pickup of a like a bar magnet or a, a pole magnet for example you want it to be right around here somewhere okay so um, too far away, you're going to hear that. Too close, you're definitely going to hear that. Um, but what that really scales to in real life, it's really hard to put this in a drawing, but what that scales to in real life is uh, starting at around 3 millimeters, 4 millimeters, um, 150 thousandths of an inch. In the United States, we say two, di two dimes and a nickel. Um, and that'll get you to a good starting point. And then just tune it by ear from there. You know, your strings are gonna have a big factor in this and also the output of your pickups are gonna have a factor in this. Um, and this is gonna tell you real quick if the pickups that are in your guitar are well balanced for your guitar or not and for the sound that you want. Because if you can't get the bridge pickup to go down far enough, maybe it's way wrong pickup for you or vice versa. Um, and that, but before you start changing stuff in your guitar, do this, because as you could see, we could really change the pickup tone or the tone of the guitar by just adjusting pickups and it's free, right? Um, so make sure uh, that you do that. We'll put a link to a tool set that we use for working on all of our, our guitar stuff in the description below because having the right tools to do this and the right size screwdrivers and stuff, it definitely helps. 
So we'll make sure that we put that in the link. If you use those links, that helps the channel out a little bit. It doesn't cost you anything, and I really appreciate it. Um, so make sure that you do that. And uh, okay, now we need to talk about this whole thing about does the magnet in the pickup pull on the strings? Well, I was gonna sit outside, but everything is really wet. Dang it. Okay, I'm set this set this down so I can drink my coffee. All right, so here's the question. Uh, this age-old religious belief from guitar playing that um, if you have a neck pickup that your guitar is going to have less tone because um, it the strings pull on it. The, the magnet pulls on the strings therefore affecting the tone. Is this true if your mag if your pickups are accurately properly adjusted like we just saw? So it ends up being about 150 thousandths of an inch whatever that is in uh, metric land ends up being somewhere around there of course you mess it around to your taste and you decide how it sounds so it doesn't matter because if it sounds good it is good so first of all none of this matters if it sounds good okay second of all <clears throat> this theory that people bring up that uh, the magnets adjust the tone of the guitar or affect the tone of the guitar because it's pulling on the strings okay so there's a uh, mathematic formula uh, and it's a vector because it's a variable based on a bunch of things um, called the magnetic dipole moment, okay? And we're gonna throw the, the I don't know, we'll put it here somewhere. You can see it, you can copy it down. Uh, if you're a calculus freak, you can go through it. Um, but basically what it says is that there's a couple of things that affect um, torque of a magnet, which is how much pull, okay? the size of the end of the pole of the magnet. So we're dealing with, if this is a magnet, <clears throat> we're dealing with the north pole here and the south pole here. So for our purposes, let's use um, a strat magnet, okay? So it's this is just one magnet, right? So there's a couple of things that affect this formula. One is, obviously, this, the actual strength of the magnet. So if it's a, you know, I think go two, three, five, whatever, ceramic, whatever. But that's actually not as much as you would think. What the real important thing is, is the diameter of it, okay? It is the length of it because actually the length has a lot to do with the size of the magnetic field on both sides. So if you go back to the, um, the little pictures we were showing before, if you go back to um, that if the magnet is longer then the magnetic field will extend further beyond itself, right? So if it's shorter everything it's proportionate. So everything is shorter, right? So the diameter of the magnet the length of the magnet the gauge the the gauze of the magnet, okay, and then also The distance that the object is away from the magnet. So the distance that the string is away from the pickup, right? also um, the diameter of the magnetic thing so the diameter of the string in relation to all of that okay and the smaller it is you might think that the smaller string has less resistance right so it would like be more affected by a magnetic field but actually because it's smaller the magnetic field doesn't have as much effect on it so if you push all of this stuff together and you use this ridiculous formula basically what you find out is that if we're about 150 thousandths away <clears throat> the magnetic pull on the string there really isn't enough to affect it to overcome its mass and overcome the playing force that we exert upon it while we're playing it it still is within the flux of the magnetic field so therefore it makes the pickup work as a transducer, however, it is not so close to the pickup that the pickup, the string pulls on it. See, a lot of people will they'll loosen their strings on their strat and then all of a sudden the strings stick to the thing and they'll say, oh, well, it must pull on the string. It, it does when it's that close, but not when it's 150 thousandths because we're not talking about it going a little less and a little less and a little less and a little less. It's literally exponential, moving from here to here 
is exponential the difference here to here from here to here so if we go from a couple thousands of an inch to a hundred and fifty thousandths of an inch it's huge the amount that that fall off happens so that therefore the string is not under the torque influence of the magnet even though it can be in the flux of that field and be a make sound okay um, <clears throat> this is again another one of those things where people will take um, this math or a theory based on the math from another you know industry or another application and then apply it to a guitar but because of the way we use guitars so the extremely weak magnets the actually very large in magnet line distance between the string and the magnet um, and the very small mass of a guitar string in the grand scheme of things because when we talk about magnetic dipole moments what we're usually using them for is something like motor design so um, for example my RC car motors uh, that's only like thousandths of an inch between like tiny tiny distance tolerances between the rotor and the armature of that motor those magnets are way 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 stronger than anything you would ever put in a guitar and therefore they have to engineer and do that math so that they understand the, the relationship between drag and the electromotive force that results from the magnetic field in an electric motor there's way more way more engineering that goes into that when we're using a string over a magnet as a transducer it's a completely different thing the tolerances are super sloppy there's way more space there's way less elect uh, magnetic field there's way less magnetic torque and none of it really makes any difference whatsoever all that to say if you put your pickups way too close and don't adjust them properly yes if you adjust them properly this will never be an issue there you go if you have any questions about this if you want to attend our guitar workshops once a month go to patreon.com slash dylan talks tone and check it out we had fun 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 this last weekend uh doing that uh, we worked on a project for larry we learned about digital multimeter stuff learned about a, a bunch of stuff actually talked about magnetic polarity and pickups learned how to like do it without like understand what north and south was um figuring out which was which without knowing that was kind of fun uh, we did a bunch of different stuff really enjoyed it uh, you can actually if you um can't or are not in a position to do that $45 a month level on Patreon. There's a lesser one, I think it's like 10 or something. And you can watch them 30 days later, which is really, really cool. And a lot of people, I think 15 or 20 people are getting some value out of that. So, um, and we still answer questions and stuff on Patreon and stuff. So it's pretty cool. So make sure you check that out. And I guess we'll see you Thursday in this live video. And I have some really cool things coming on Thursday. Leslie, I think, is actually going to be in the video with me because we want to talk about some stuff that came up this last week. And I'm super stoked of what this channel is doing. And I'm really, really, really proud uh, of it. And I love the fact that it's helping people. We're going to talk about that on Thursday. Super awesome. Also, we're about to hit 45,000 subscribers. Thursday, we're also going to talk about the plan for the Les Paul. And I'm going to kind of tell you what I'm doing with those pickups. And that's going to be super fun. So Thursday, I guess we'll still be here Thursday. And then we start heading south. It's cold. We'll see you.